it is not hard to make the argument that the greatest sports photographer of the last 50 years is Walter Yost. Walter Yost is best known for his work at Sports Illustrated. His photos have appeared on the cover of the magazine more than 300 times. He has photographed the greatest athletes and sporting events of his time, as well as everyday people who play games just for the pure joy of it. The Colby College Museum of Art is now showing an exhibition of Yost's works called Game Time. For Yost, it all began when he was a child taking pictures of his family with a brownie camera. Years later, when I had made a somewhat of a success of myself, my grandmother always said, and this was when I was like nine, I knew he was going to be a photographer. I knew it because the way he moved around, he would never sit in one spot. Connolly fakes the throw beautifully, then spots Gifford. In 1959, Walter Yossi's father had season tickets to New York Giants football games. Walter went with him, camera in hand. So week three, I hit a few frames. We go back to where I lived in East Orange. We processed the film, and I held it up. And as one person said, my future was unlocked. And it was from that point on, that's all I could think about. You were shooting on assignment for Sports Illustrated at age 17? 17. First, first job, uh, it was um, two weeks after I graduated high school. First Sports Illustrated cover at age 19? 19. How did you get good so fast? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know how I got good so fast. The feel of how athletes feel and the feel of how they think and how they move. And I had a good knowledge of sport. You know, I watched a lot of sport. My father and my grandfather loved sport. So it was just one of these things that sort of evolved naturally. You know? When you finished shooting, you would just take the rolls of film, send them off to the lab, send them off to the magazine, right? You often had no idea of how good the stuff was you'd shot. Maybe for 25 years, 30 years, I just started to see some things that I've shot, you know, in the 60s. You either would bring the film to a, an air freight, drive it to air freight, or they would charter planes if it were big games on a sun, Saturday or Sunday, and you'd bring the film from the event to Chicago or New York. I mean, I've been on chopper, to a Learjet, to a limo, to the lab you know, for Super Bowl film. You know, two of us on the jet. But that's the only way to get the film there. This is a photo Yost took of the great Willie Mays. In time, he moved away from this type of work and turned more toward portraits. What was it that drove that? Why did you want to focus more on people and less on the game and the action? Uh, I think I got bored with the action. I, I, you start to look for different ways to see sport. I think baseball was an easy one because the best pictures of baseball to me or when no one's doing anything. And I started to look away from the field and what's happening on the sidelines and any other venue but the field. And then I started to get jobs to shoot portraits. He always began to take what he called action portraits that show athletes in motion with every detail of the photo planned out in advance. One of the photos here perfectly represents that approach you had of creating the background you wanted. And it's the blue dunk. Michael Jordan, you, correct me if I'm wrong, painted two parking lots for that shoot. One parking lot was painted red and the other was painted blue to give you the background you wanted. That's true. I, I don't think I personally was out there <laughs> painting, but we, uh, it's the first time I shot Michael. So we painted the courts red and blue because I didn't know what uniform he was going to show up in. Then we brought a, an NBA basket in from St. Louis, driven in because you wanted to be able to put the basket at a certain height, and you have to move it because of the angle of the sun. So you couldn't have a stationary basket, and then you have to shoot it between like two and three, where the shadow's too short or it's too far, far removed. So Michael shows up in his red, we go to the blue, and we had a camera, took 14 frames a second, I went in a cherry picker, lowered the basket, and let him go. And that was the blue dunk. You look at these photos and there are certain athletes that they just have this kind of electricity about them. Arnold Palmer, Muhammad Ali. Do you know when you're photographing these people, when you meet them maybe for the first time, that there's something special about them? Yeah, I, I think you do. I don't, I, I'm not sure if it's just reputation, but you know, Arnold Palmer was one of the great people I've ever met. You know, he treated everybody with dignity. Every autograph he signed, he took time with. Everyone loved Arnold, and he gave that love back to people. I mean, to me, he's one of the great examples of how 
people should be to people. One part of Yost's extraordinary career that is not represented in this exhibition is his photography for the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issues. Those pictures, shot over decades, got male athletes interested in talking to him in a way that nothing else could. Yes, yeah, the best thing that ever happened to me as a sports photographer because you'd go into a locker room and no one wants to talk to you because they see a camera. Next thing, they look, hey man, you're that guy who shot the swimsuits because they thought I could find them the women. He knows, can you, can you hook me up with, uh, I said, look, I'm not a dating service, I'm not a pimp, I'm not doing this. <laughs> I mean, I can see some people in this room that are all over me. <laughs> you, over the years, have shot pretty much everything there is to shoot in sports. You've covered all the big events. You've, is, is the record still intact? You've covered every single Super Bowl? 52 straight and counting. Never Hopefully. watched Never watched the Super Bowl on television because no, you've always been there. I, no, I don't know what I would do. I probably, I'm sure one day it's going to come where I'm going to have to watch it. Vanity Fair, rather famously, with a, with a nod towards your work on the, the swimsuit shoots, called you the luckiest photographer on earth. <laughs> Why argue with that? <laughs> Why argue indeed? He has, as you can imagine, over nearly 60 years now, traveled, I don't know, a couple million miles around the world. His wife calls him the human FedEx package. She jokes, they just <laughs> slap a label on him that says, you know, San Francisco, Send Shanghai, <laughs> wherever, and off he goes. <laughs> if you'd like to see some of Walter Yost's photos for yourself, you'll find them at the Colby College Museum of Art in Waterville. But don't dawdle. The exhibition called Game Time will be there only through June 24th.